Just five weeks before these jubilant scenes in Mexico, 96 highly tuned rally cars had set out from England's football headquarters at Wembley to face 16,000 miles of the most testing motoring ever conceived. They called it a rally, but the Monte Carlo and Safari didn't hold a candle to this mammoth event. Crossing two continents and into a third, cars and competitors were to visit 25 countries in just 26 days driving. Their ultimate destination, Mexico City. The first stage of the rally, a mere four and a half thousand miles, threaded its way across Europe to Bulgaria and back to Lisbon in Portugal. Up among the leaders in the race across Europe were Ford's team of escorts, almost the smallest cars among the 96, but quick to prove that lots of good things come in small packages. Behind the wheel for Ford were Tino Mackinen, partnering Belgian champion Gilbert Stapelaire in escort number 103, Rana Altenen as the number one driver in escort 46, along with Henry Lydon, Soccer star Jimmy Greaves had dropped his customary number nine to partner Tony Fall in Escort 26, while another British crew of Roger Clark and Alex Poole were piloting Escort number 65. Looked on as possible winners of the rally were the flying Finn Hanu Mekela and Gunnar Palm with number 18 on their door, while the Polish crew of Sobislav Zazada and Marek Maczowski made up the team. <laughs> By the time cars and crews reached Yugoslavia, it had become obvious just how tough this event was going to be. The route lay along roads more fitted to moving cattle than cars, gravel tracks carved out of mountainsides that hung above perilous thousand-foot drops. Dust posed an immense problem, while drivers constantly fought off the effects of fatigue brought on by the intense concentration required through driving non-stop day and night. But there was still a long way to go. So far, in fact, that Ford's team chief, Stuart Turner, had laid no hard and fast tactics for the European drive. As far as Europe was concerned, we decided really to play it off the cuff. The drivers were told that it was 16,000 miles. They knew this. And in fact, Jimmy Greaves had got a sign on his dashboard saying it was this sort of distance. We always, in the first few preems on the rally, or the first few days of rally, you get this settling down process. And in fact, this is precisely what happened. The pattern showed that we were quickest on the stages which were very difficult and tight but of course Citroens took the lead over this uh, section in Yugoslavia which they negotiated better than we did from then on from Yugoslavia to Lisbon the preems were possible within the time allowed which meant that Hanu in particular couldn't catch the time back once he'd lost it he was it was impossible for him to pull back from second place but we knew that on paper we got the legs of anything else in the rally and it was simply then a case of calming the drivers, convincing them of this, and above all, of course, stopping any inter-team rivalry. René Troutman in the Citroën led 71 survivors into Lisbon, but only just. Two minutes behind came Mikola and Palm in the leading escort. Jimmy Greaves confounded everyone by coming in 10th, and he was in no doubt which section in Europe had been the toughest. Oh, the uh, Yugoslav section, without doubt, from uh, Titograd up to, uh, well, up through to Monza, along the two preems from the Titograd uh, KOTOR preem, and the, the the Glamok Boris Krupa frame, they were the two really tough sections. So which were the cars he was looking out for? Uh, well, I should think the Citroens, obviously, because they're all there. Uh, I think the Fords will be there at the finish, that's a certainty, somewhere down the line. Lisbon signalled a well-earned rest for cars and drivers as the SS Derwent took survivors over the water to Brazil, to Rio de Janeiro. Coffee and soccer seemed to be the Brazilian stock in trade, but they were happy to adopt the World Cup rally as another excuse for carnival time. And with Europe looked on as a pipe opener by many leading crews, survivors now faced the long 12,000-mile South American run to Mexico. With Troutman in the lead, Citroën posed a real challenge, holding third, fifth and seventh places as well. But the escorts of Mackinnon, Altonen, Greaves and Zazada were all in the first 12. The pressure now began to build up, but for everyone in the rally, the warning of floods during the Brazilian section posed an added hazard, although Stuart Turner felt Ford's team's chances wouldn't be upset. We've laid plans to cover every eventuality, and I think we can cope with floods. I hope it doesn't mean that the rally sort of bogs down our mass somewhere. I think it would be nice for this rally to be won by not necessarily one of the hares, but somebody who's gone briskly. We don't want to freak wind. 700 miles out from Rio, at the end of the first South American stage, the fight was really on between the escorts and Citroens. Roger Clark came right back into the running to lead Ford's team home to the first five places on this gruelling stretch. This all-out attack on the Citroens left Mikola and Palm with a narrow lead over René Troutman, the European winner.
Montevideo in their sight. There seemed to be no stopping the escorts, for as they sped towards the Uruguayan capital, Mikola consolidated his lead after Troutman had crashed in his efforts to stay on terms. Mackinnon moved to second place, ahead of Guy Verrier in the second Citroen, and fourth and fifth came the escorts of Altonen and Greaves. the very fast run down South America's east flank took its toll on the field, not the least hazardous obstacles being the massive trucks that ground their way around the narrow roads. Trucks were a problem on certain stages, local traffic in general wasn't particularly high, but you had this problem that a big truck can throw up an enormous slipstream of dust, and there comes a time when the driver's got to swallow hard and cross himself and pull out and have a go and go through the dust and hope and pray as he goes past. And this, this certainly created a problem, but there were no accidents due to the dust. But they were an incidental problem, but I would say that the trucks were really no more of a problem than the, if you like, the llamas. <laughs> 